But we all know the United States as this country that we see right here. But did you know that it used to look a whole lot different throughout history? Let me go ahead and show you. We first begin our journey in the year 1500. As you can see, most of the United States of America is Native American territory. By 1540, we start to see parts of Central and South America being colonized by the Spaniards. By the year 1620 is when we start to see settlements of pilgrims coming into New England and other parts of Eastern United States. In 1670, we are part of the British Empire, and it's not until 1770 and 1780 when we start to get independence from the British Empire and become the United States. But this is what the United States used to originally look like, which was just the Eastern and parts of the Midwest and much of it belonged to the Spanish Empire or modern day Mexico. Yeah, I'm a knee uh, I be trapping in my feather and my teepee. Uh, yeah, East Bad Cherokee Key. From that any young we are trapping up cause that's who we be. Yeah, I ain't come here on no ship. Turtle Island where I come from. Where they grow tobacco and they learn to grow the cone from. Smiling in our face, we took them in and then they crossed us. Flipped the history and our identity was lost, bruh. Yeah, we did some research and we found out they was lying. They was programming our kind we should have seen, but we was blind. But I know just who I am and I know just who I ain't. I ain't get no reparations to cash out up in the bank, yeah. You former black slave. In Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, there lies a cemetery for Creek Indian freedmen, the tribe's former black slaves. It's neglected and becoming a dumping ground. Yes, this is one of the Benjamins. When Rhonda Grayson first heard about it, she didn't get very far in her inquiries about who owned this plot of land. When I received the second call, I said, this is the ancestors calling us, and we have to do something. Not only did she find the owner, she managed to acquire the land on behalf of the Creek Indian Freedmen. Now she's begun work on restoration and an accounting of who's buried here. This is Rebecca Johnson, born July 4th on Independence Day, 1865. At the recent commemorations for the centenary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, black Native Americans are a strong presence. And as with the massacre of 1921, many in the U.S. and elsewhere aren't even aware of their existence. Some Native American tribes long accepted black members. But in what's now Oklahoma, white settlers judged the tribes civilized because not only did they assimilate with the newcomers in dress and religion, but also in the adoption of black chattel slavery. After the Civil War, the tribal nations abolished slavery as part of treaties signed with the federal government in 1866. Former slaves would be fully integrated and now known as freedmen. And there was full integration and intermarriage. Agus Shochu Perryman even served as the principal chief of the Creek Nation between 1887 and 1895. We know that America Kohi was born in 1888 uh, she is an original enrollee of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Rhonda Grayson's great-grandmother lived her whole life as a member of the Muscogee Creek tribe. But then, in 1979, the Creek passed new laws decreeing that freedmen were no longer tribal members. The other tribes followed. Freedmen would lose their tribal voting rights as well as their housing, health and other benefits. Everyone should be outraged that this could happen in 1979. Tribes argued it was an expression of their sovereignty. An 1866 treaty with the US government should not be the final say on who was a member of their tribes. They should be. Sovereignty is fine, but sovereignty does not give you the right to discriminate against a people, and that's essentially what's happening. Grayson, who's been leading efforts to overturn the new laws, sees other motivations. It's about greed and it's about racism is the core of the entire issue. This is the way. This is the way.